Hello everyone, this is Michael Brinkhoff, your local IT guy for the librarian. I'm going to give you a quick video on the new printer. It's a M606 from HP, um, and it's replacing the 9040 DN, uh, which is a behemoth. It came out in 2006, and this guy came out in about 2015 or 16. And uh, it's one of the newer printers, has a bunch of uh, new features, which is going to make it... Um, uh, much more reliable than our old printers here. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, first of all, I want to point out that the sign, which we'll probably be redoing pretty soon, um, is covering the paper trays right here. Uh, and for a good re reason. Uh, we do have uh, quite a few students who reach in here and they just grab paper and they just take it. Well, since we're charging for that service, we need to make sure that uh, um, they are not doing that. Uh, so if they want paper, they need to ask at the front desk. So, um, let's go ahead and show you right over here. So, there's a uh, touchpad display right here. Um, if you do see any students uh, poking around in here, let's go ahead and put a kibosh on that one. Uh, we don't want them poking around and changing any of the settings. Um, it's not necessarily secure, so... Um, let me know if anybody fiddles with it and I'll take a look, make sure that all the settings are, are the same. In the future, I do want to put some kind of cover over here so nobody sees it. It is a touchpad display, so it is a quite a bit more inviting than the old display, which is also not necessarily locked down, um, but is a little bit more difficult to uh, poke around in. So, um, changing the cartridge is actually pretty simple. So, just pop up this lid right here and then you can pull this down. Um, you will notice that the uh, plastic right here is a bit flimsy. So what you wanna do is make sure that you're using two hands. I'm holding this camera here, so I can't use two hands. So I'm just gonna show you right there. Um, so to change the uh, toner, you're just gonna pull up and pull out. And that's it. It's quite a bit smaller than the um, older style printer right over here. Um, has a little less capacity, but um, fairly, fairly comparable uh, otherwise. Okay, so um, I'm going to pop this guy right back in, just like that. Just pops right into place, and then you can close it right up. Um, down below, we have uh, paper trays. I'm going to take this guy right off so we can show you the paper trays. All right, so the paper tray is also a bit more flimsy than the old style. Um, you're just going to want to pull either from the sides, on both sides, with both hands, uh, instead of one. Or if you want to use one hand, you need to pull from here. And the reason for that is it's flimsy plastic, and with time you're going to have a lot of wear and tear. And we don't want that. We want it to last years and years and years. So um, just go ahead and pull this out right here. And you'll notice right on the side here, is where the paper line is. Um, you can put one ream, that's one box of paper, in this, and then pop it in, and then close the door, and that is all you really need to do. I do wanna point out that we also have uh, a little meter right here which tells you just how full it is. Believe it or not, this is at the full mark. You would think it would be up here, but that's where it is. Um, in the future, we might actually put a line right here to, to help guide folks uh, who want to come up here. Sorry, folks, the students, workers, who, who refill these uh, uh, paper trays. Uh, and then in the future, we might want to mark about where the half point is and, and so on. So I'm going to display it, show you here. I'm going to take out some paper. And we still have lots of paper in here. Uh, and then I'm going to show you what it does. So you don't actually have to open the paper tray because it's going to tell you just how full it is. So um, based off of that, I would say I took, oh, I don't know, about 25% of, of that. So I think we might, we might draw some lines here in the future and play around with it. Um, let me know if you want to help out with that. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put the paper right back in. And there we go. I'm gonna show you what the levels are. Just like that. 
Um, and then two trays, of course, to grab from one tray and then go to the other tray. And once that's completely empty, you're out of paper. Okay, so last bit. Um, okay, it's the last bit. I'm going to show you how to clear paper jams. So um, you're going to want to lift the lid right here and then this lid right here. And then you're going to want to take the cartridge, or sorry, the toner out. Place it on the side. Okay, so paper jams are going to be at various locations. It's not nearly as complicated as this old one where you've got to pull out from different sides, different trays, and then maybe you'll find what you're looking for. Um, everything, pretty much all the paper jams are going to happen right here in the front, and then there's one location in the back where that's going to happen. Um, but we'll get to that in a minute. All right, so what you need to know is that first, Paper jams are going to happen way back here, way back here. Most of them are going to happen right underneath where the toner cartridge uh, was sitting. Easy enough, just pull them out. Um, be very careful, don't use any tools, use your fingers. Try not to touch any of the parts um, so we don't break anything. So they don't make printers like they used to. Um, the parts are not as sturdy. They are flimsy and they're really just meant to be handling paper and not your fingers. So, um, one part, as you pull this guy right up, remember that the green colored plastic is usually where you can um, access uh, various parts of uh, getting the, uh, <coughs> clearing out the paper. Uh, so here's one, they can get stuck underneath there. And then here's another one lift that up and that allows you a little bit of access to any uh, paper jams and little paper bits and then you can also take this guy out right here and have further access okay and um, pull out the paper tray itself and to do that all the way at the end lift up and then pull out and where you would find it would be right up here. So paper can sometimes get trapped right up there. Um, if you happen to see anything, that's that's where you would pull it right out. So again, be very, very, very careful. And if you're unsure about anything, get me um, or your uh, or your lead to help you out with this. Okay. Back in here. That's it. Okay. Um, lastly, I want to show you that. Oh, yeah, I'm going to show you the last paper jam area. Uh, all right. So sometimes paper jams can happen back here as well. So this is the, the duplex. Unit. And sometimes they can get caught in here. And then, of course, down here. Um, but they'll be super obvious uh, that they're they're trapped in there. So you may you may not actually have to pull this out, um, but if you do, just know that that's that's where the paper would be. You can see the paper tray right here, and then here is actually the um, uh, the the heating unit, which um, pretty much uh, the fuser that uh, puts the the toner right on the the paper. Um, let's see. I think that's pretty much it there. Let's get right back in there. Okay. So, um, if you encounter any errors on here, please let me know. Um, or at least student know if you're unsure about what it is. Uh, the common ones that pop up are that there's a fuser error. Um, that usually has something to do with papers being jammed in there, um, which you can take care of yourself. Um, a lot of problems can be uh, resolved by simply turning the unit off and then back on. Um, the unit does go off after about 20 minutes and then this light will start flashing. So it'll be in a standby mode, which you'll be able to get out of uh, relatively quickly. That's pretty much it. All right. Thank you.